So yesterday I shared the the story times of Caden, a trans man on this app who was talking about who the F raised me. I also shared a video that was talking about how when parents divorce or gray divorce, how um, how adult children pull away from dads and gravitate towards moms. I had a lot, a lot of comments in my comment section. Many of them, some of these might be triggering. So this is your trigger warning now, but I'm going to share um, several comments that popped up yesterday. Lots of comments. All of this is a commentary video. This person says, sir, you described my stepmother who also made up things about me and my sister so she could torture us. She also did the hymen check when we were little children. And when it was found out her son was SAing me and my sister, to this day, she blames everyone but him. My brother, her son is five years older than me and six years older than my sister. And he did it to both of us without each of us knowing that it was happening to the other, like any predator. I had been no contact with my father and stepmother for the last four years after a confrontation about how we grew up and they insisted that they didn't do anything wrong. They did their best and refused to acknowledge the hurt and trauma they inflicted. Every kind of child abuse that was defined in a bit of reading I was doing just last week, I realized me and my sister experienced growing up. This man, talking about Caden, this man could have literally grown up in my house. I'm Jamaican as well. Same experience, literally the exact same thing. So Danielle says, this story is all too familiar. I'm beginning to grasp that not everyone can relate to this severely violent treatment. The level of insidious intention to break the people in the home and the pervasive apathy among the adults in actively not addressing any of the problems all felt like childhood to me. I remember thinking in middle school that I liked to look up when I walked. Eventually, I taught myself to stand up straight when I was in school. I also recall feeling like my little sister was in so much trouble for, for wiggling in her um, seat at school. It caused the teacher to send her to the nurse. Unfortunately, that same day, my mother was called to take me home for a fever from the nurse's office. Looking back, I realized it wasn't exactly coincidence that I fell ill the same day my sister's switch welts were too fresh for her to stay still. I'm sure I was sick with grief and upset from trauma too. The hellish fallout of patriarchy and white supremacy and slavery that carries on today still has too many of us picking up the whips and donning the chains to do the berating, beating, and unaliving of those of those overseers all on our own bodies against our children. No threat needed. Without investing in our recovery, we will simply carry the bat baton on and finish the deadly task. Healing and Black lives actually do matter. The fact, the fact is that we're the first ones who need to understand and manifest that to value ourselves. Whew. She said, we are doing the work of the overseers. That's what that's what these parents are doing. Chanel says, as soon as he said his mother was Jamaican Seven Day Adventist, I knew it was going to be a wild ride. I grew up in the exact same atmosphere, and I personally had some triggering experiences from that church, the church's private school, and the people in it. Whatever was going on in the Seven Day Adventist, um, it sounds like they need to be investigated. This person says, sounds like the legacy of enslavement to me is so sad that so many Black children around the world have been subjugated to the same abuse, invalidation, and neglect that our ancestors suffered at the hands of their abusers. It's heartbreaking that our parents continue to pass down these toxic patterns. Thank goodness today we are able to share our stories collectively in hopes of healing ourselves and the next generations. This person said, I had a civil, similar mom, light-skinned, and always said I'm ugly and dark. More or less very similar stories, so I feel for him and feel so glad that he went no contact and is now healing up. I get the endless guilt trips from everyone, I, um, everyone around that I'm such an a-hole for abandoning my mom. I'm South Asian. It took me to nearly age 40 to finally walk away. Every time I tried before, other relatives guilted me into going back. Now I've walked away from most of my family and life has never been sweeter. Good riddance. People who tell victims um, of this sh that they're a-holes for abandoning their moms, they are the real a-holes, not us.
Dang, this one. Damn, his sister's upbringing sounds exactly like mine's, down to being allowed in other parts of the house only when cleaning and taking care of the home for the men and others that live there. Head down, quiet, and trying to get through it with at least contact as possible. I'm no contact with my family since 2018. And yeah, I used to be sick of people trying to force me to forgive them and giving them access to me. Hell no. Nah. This person says, once I heard Jamaican and Seventh-day Adventist, I thought, say no more. Lily Lady A says, the moment he said his mother was Jamaican, I knew we were in for a ride. It's the truth. When you know, you know. And obviously, I didn't really know. <laughs> but, but the comments are telling us. Mystic Moon says, please tell us the entire life story from start to finish. Caribbean version. Most mothers had that type of belt. I remember I tossed my mother's belt behind the dresser. She did look for it, but because our home was chaotic, no one knew what happened to that particular belt. Years later, I found the belt. Falashade said, my mother did some of this stuff too. My family is Jamaican. She would buy stuff and tell us we couldn't eat any of it. I got beaten for leaving a fork in the sink. I got beaten to the point I bled and peed myself at seven for leaving two empty water bottles in my room. Jamaican parents are rough. I'm so sorry for any child going through it. Good expo um, good expose video, but it really just triggered the inner child in me. Arwellian says, this is the first time I've heard of food abuse. The woman who raised me used to buy food and forbid us to touch it. We then run out of food we could eat, sometimes for days. But if we ate the food she forbid us to eat, we'd get beat mercilessly. One time a teacher noticed bruises and I told her what happened. Child Protective Services came to the house and basically gave the woman who raised me pointers on how to abuse me without leaving marks. I was beat again right after the social worker left. I'm mostly no contact now, basically just run into her at family functions. She complains to my other siblings that I never contact her. Jeez, I wonder why. This person that I circled just simply said parental terrorism. A lot of these stories, that, that just sums it up. This person says, I can believe every word. I too have Jamaican parentage and there are some wicked and evil things children endured, physical and mental abuse, basically torture. Some of these people are truly disturbed. You have to put distance between them to preserve your mental health. Spice Sugar says, this just triggered the F out of me, but I'm at work, a daycare, and it's nap time, so I'll cry later. My mom was very similar to this woman. I barely talk to her and I'm constantly asked by family to forgive her for her unforgivable acts. My sisters, I have six sisters, don't reach out. The youngest two are teenagers and that's that's the only reason why um why of us reach uh, why some of us reach out so that the little two can have a lifeline out there. Having my own children really made me realize how unhinged the la the lady is. I could never imagine doing the things that were done to me to my kids or allowing the trauma she condoned and still does. She asked me to call her today. I think I'll wait. So I'm switching from the Jamaican stories to just the other stories that were under the post. This person says, my dad refused to work or provide for our family and himself. Eventually he left for another woman and had children by her, which he also eventually abandoned. Both my mother and that woman were left to financially, physically, and psychologically raise his kids and sacrifice their own life and happiness. Two decades later, seeing I, had, I now have a good career, he started messaging me. I forgave him and gave him not a single penny. He died alone and destitute. I have mercy, but I also believe in justice. If you're a man about to pump and dump or leave your baby mama, you better think twice. Pandora Bear says, funny how they act like you're at fault and they're deigning to allow you back into their lives when they want something, isn't it? I cut my mother and her husband off when I was 19 and moved out. There was one point when I was 20 when they tried to reach out and I was tempted to give them a chance for a minute. After that minute, though, I realized they weren't apologizing to me and had not changed at all. I was still being guilt tripped and blamed. Their message summed up was that they would forgive me for everything and let me come home. Like, lady, you watched your husband beat me and spit on me. And one time I had the courage to reach out for help in elementary school, scared me into saying I lied by telling me strangers would hurt, hurt the worse and my siblings would end up getting split up in foster homes.
and also get abused and probably killed. And Aho, you treated me like a verbal and physical punching bag while I provided free childcare my entire childhood. He also dragged me out and locked me out of the house multiple times as a child for not getting home on time or being too mouthy. I've realized over time, the momentary temptation to let them back in was simply a want for what they should have been as parents, not them as they were and always will be. It's better to cut off bad parents and love yourself. You are the only person you are you guarantee to be with for the rest of your life. Fire Silver says, with no contact with the homosexual, womanizing, abusive, tyrannical bully that I called dad in 2010. My very first memory of him was flinging me across the room in a rage when I was a toddler. Thankfully, he aimed me at a bed, but it was still terrifying. He whipped me with a weighted jump rope when I was in kindergarten. He cheated all over my mother, even when she was pregnant with me. I recall having a bloody lip, nose, and being punched in the stomach often, though I don't recall how it happened. Since he was always threatening me with a bloody lip, I don't have to think hard. He'd ordered my little brother and I to do chores, but usually didn't show us how and still hit us with his belt when he failed to do them, when we failed to do them to his liking. For years, he and our mother had matching brown Western style belts that they'd hang in their closet and we'd have to get them so they could hit us. And we'd never know when it was coming. They used to clean our room without our knowledge and we'd come home from school to our toys, clothes and etc. thrown out. I didn't dare protest. Once he burst into our room late at night, raging at us to clean our room. He stood between us and the closet, bellowing at us to take things to the closet and hit us with his belt as we passed by him. I was crying so hard in, and in my underwear too, so I felt humiliated as well. He tried to take his 15-year-old nephew to a brothel, but the nephew called his mom crying, so I think he escaped being essayed. He'd yank my baby teeth out with pliers while they were still attached. And I still recall the feeling of being a uh, feeling of ripped, ripping tissue and the gushing blood. Then he punished me for crying about it. Once he ordered my brother to draw his bath, but he accidentally drew it too hot and he forced my brother to get in it. I still recall his screaming. I think he was in kindergarten. That was the only time our mother tried to stand up to him, but she was really meek about it. No one really tried to pr protect us. He'd abuse us in front of other relatives and they just look away awkwardly. Thankfully, they divorced when I was eight or uh, 13. I still feel like I'd been, no, I'm sorry. I felt like I'd been let out of prison, but we still have visitation and he'd often take us to his weird friend's house and park us in front of the little TV while they went off and did heaven knows what. When I was in high school, he'd flirt with my classmates and once said girls around 16 have resilient bodies that recover from pregnancy quicker, and that's why they are the most desirable to men. And he'd always made child molesting jokes. But I could, I mean, she, I'm sorry, she says, I could go on and on, but I'm free of him, physically at least, and he has to mooch off of his rich relatives because he barely worked and never bought any property or invested. I've been open about how awful he is, but they still enable and protect him. I've even been told to forgive and forget, and that's your daddy, well, they all deserve each other. I've managed to build a nice life for myself and I'm going to therapy. I found health, a healthier father figure and mother figures. Going non, no contact can really be the ticket to freedom, success, and happiness. Okay, so Black Bird Fly says, I have the classic deadbeat dad. I don't know what the non-classic deadbeat dad is, but she has the classic deadbeat dad. Multiple kids, eight plus um, with multiple moms and never in any of our lives. But despite all of this, I wanted to give him a chance when he found me on Facebook because I thought it would be good for my mental health. I always felt like something was missing growing up naturally. But after getting in contact and having to hear his sob story about how he tried to find me and it's all the mothers of his kids fault that he was not in our lives to gaslighting me that I wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for his DNA contribution. That's when I wouldn't accept his BS reasons for not being around. I just couldn't. This was in addition to getting mad at me for not wanting to spend a week at his place reacquainting our, ourselves after him not being in my life for 40 years and faking his own death to see my reaction. 
Yes, that's right. I got a text from an unknown number from someone claiming to be his friend who said my father had died in hospital. This joker text three months later, forgetting that he had done that when I reminded him his supposed he's supposed to be dead. He claimed he was on drugs, but now he's clean and wants to start over. Now he just sends random Facebook messages, long passages about how him and his life and all his hardships and adventures never even asked about how I'm doing. At this point, I was just considering just seeing him at least once. Last time I saw him, I was three. I'm now 44 for some sort of closure, but I'm not even sure it's worth it. Lee Lady A says, I remember a car arriving to the post just days before my birthday and being surprised my dad knew when it was. His return address was on it. I opened, I opened it and it was actually a Christmas card. Christmas was months ago with a letter in it, as usual, asking for money and me to move local to him. <gasps> this is the last screenshot, but I wanted to get to this one too. The, the realist says, personally, I don't think it's the divorce that divides men from their kids. It's the dad starts dating someone else. My own dad got a great divorce. He and I became really close. He would text and hang out with me all the time, spoil his grandkids, my kids, rotten. And it was really, it was a really happy time. Then he started dating a lady and very quickly married her. Guess who we barely hear from now? Even when I do contact him, he treats me like an inconvenience. I'm heartbroken. My ex-husband was also involved with the kids until he started dating. Then he stopped showing up for his custody. They broke up, so now he's back to seeing his kids again. But I know it's only a matter of time before he ghosts them again. I shared all of these stories. There are so many more. I had hundreds of comments yesterday, hundreds on different posts. And so many of them are people talking about why they went no contact with their parents. And many of these parents are earning no contact. So when you see an old person in the nursing home and you just think, oh my gosh, what happened? Where are these a-hole kids? Understand that they may have earned that spot. They might have earned that loneliness. They might have earned that home that they're in all by themselves where that nobody comes to visit them in because they that's how they were. They, they tortured their children. They were unsupportive. They ignored them. They didn't pour into their children. And now their children are matching their energy. So, you know, when people share that they're no contact, don't automatically say, that's your mother, that's your father, without knowing their story. Don't be an a-hole like that. Don't be an a-hole. You don't know what people went through. All right, y'all. I know that this was a long one. I get it. I, I don't care. People share their stories, and these stories need to be told, even if these people don't have the capacity or the will or the nerve to go on and make YouTube videos, we're going to share these stories and we're going to out these people. I mean, these parents that had these children and then treated them like this. We're telling the stories and hopefully the next generation of our children have different parents than the parents that grew up treating their children like they treated, like these people are. All right. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Like, comment,